the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the small undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. We are met in solemn assembly to memorialize our late president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and to rededicate our lives to achieving the suffrage of the free human spirit to which the late president was committed. Against the heritage of hate, the late president bequeathed his country and the world a new heritage of mutual toleration in which may be found peace with justice. Together we grasp the torch from his hand. Thirty days and a few hours ago, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, 35th President of the United States, died a martyr's death. The world will not forget what he did here. He will live on in our hearts, which will be his shrine. Throughout his life, he had malice toward none and charity for all. But a senseless act of mindless malice struck down this man of charity, and we shall never be the same. One hundred years, thirty-three days, and several hours ago, the 16th President of the United States made a few appropriate remarks at Gettysburg. The world has long remembered what he said there. He lived on in this memorial, which is his tabernacle. As it was 100 years ago, so it is now. We have been bent in sorrow, but not in purpose. We buried Abraham Lincoln and John Kennedy, but we did not bury their dreams or their visions. They are our dreams and our visions today. For President Lincoln and John Kennedy moved toward those nobler dreams and those larger visions where the needs of the people dwell. Their fight for a better life for more people is their legacy to their countrymen. It is the coin by which their worth shall be counted. It is the gauge by which their memory shall be measured. In this land and around the world, those whose hopes are meager plead for change. Those whose children are hungry and illiterate pray for sustenance and knowledge. 
Those whose dignity is blunted and whose liberties are scarce cry out for equality and decency and opportunity. And on this eve of Christmas, in this time of grief and unity, of sadness and continuity, let there be for all people in need the light of an era of new hope and a time of new resolve. Let the light shine and let this Christmas be our thanksgiving and our dedication. May God bless this land and all who live in it. For let us here on this Christmas night determine that John Kennedy did not live or die in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that we may achieve in our time and for all time the ancient vision of peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. One year ago, our beloved President, John F. Kennedy, reminded us that Christmas is the day when all of us dedicate our thoughts to others, when we're all reminded that mercy and compassion are the really enduring virtues. When all of us show by small deeds and by large that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And now here, as we have done so many years, we turn on in your capital city the lights of our national Christmas tree. And we say that we hope that the world will not narrow into a neighborhood before it has broadened into a brotherhood. Here's the last one. 